Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for this Resurrection Sunday where we celebrate you and your finished work on the cross. And the only way it was finished was when you resurrected from the dead. The cross would not be finished without the resurrection. So we thank you for that resurrection that finished the work on the cross. And we pray that you would speak to us today through your Holy Spirit. That we would receive from you this day. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I'll be reading from the Amplified Classic. So when I do Amplified Classic, most likely I'm going to be teaching a bit. So is it okay if I teach a little today? Verse 14 says, For this reason, seeing the greatness of this plan by which you are built together in Christ, I bow my knees before the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let's stop there for a moment. It says, for this reason. So Paul is praying. This is actually one of the different prayers in, the, in Paul's epistles that we see. There are many times Paul is writing a letter. And in his writing of the letter, he is teaching, he is exhorting, he is rebuking, he is correcting, he is instructing, he is, he is giving doctrine. But there are some, let, some parts of the letters where Paul is praying. He's writing down his prayer. Now, prayer is not directed to people. Prayer is directed to God. Amen. Amen. Do you pray? You don't pray to people. You don't pray to people. You pray to God. Amen. Amen. But can God hear me? Yes, He can. God can hear you. So this is a prayer. So the, He says, for this reason, so... There is a reason for this prayer and it kind of explains what this prayer is about. It says, seeing the greatness of this plan by which you are built together in Christ. So how many of you know that God has a plan for your life? And one of the plans or purposes of the plan was for us to be built together in Christ. So God has specific plans for you, but He has also a corporate plan for the body of Christ. And one of the corporate plans of God is that we be built together in Christ. So what is that plan? Did Jesus have a plan? Did God have a plan for Jesus to come to earth? Ulitin ko. Did God have a plan for Jesus to come to earth? So what is the plan? Anybody know the plan of God? Let's look at scripture. John 3, 16 and 17. For God, what? For God so that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have. Verse 17, remember John 3, 16. Needs to go with 17. That's why, because it says 4, means it's a continuation. For God did not send His Son to the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Jesus might be saved. What is the plan of God? Amen. And why did God do it? Because He loves us. So what's the plan of God? Why did he send Jesus? To save the world. So you mean Jesus did not come to condemn the world? Jesus did not come to condemn sinners. Why? Because that means he would have to condemn everyone. The Bible is very clear. For all. For all. Everybody say all. all. For all have sinned and all. Everybody say all. Sa Tagalog, ano po yung all? Lahat. lahat. Tayo ba'y kasama sa lahat? Amen. We are, we are, or I would like to say, we were all a part of that all. We've all, we all were sinners and we all were sinful. Amen. So He did not come to condemn because if Jesus came to condemn, then he would have come to earth, he would have come in, and he would have just said, Pak, Pak, Pak. I'm here, I'm the king of the world, you're all guilty, 
And in a not so nice way to say, he'd say, okay, all of you go to hell. That's what condemnation does. He would have all said, you're all guilty, 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 guilty. <laughs> all of you go to hell. Because that's, the Bible says that the wages of sin is death. It is eternal separation from God. He did not come to condemn. Your sin condemns you. Can I tell you that? Sin condemns you. But Jesus never came to condemn. He knew we were all guilty. What's the point of rubbing it in? He did not need to come down to earth to let us know that we are guilty of sin. Come on. We all knew we were guilty even before he came. Are you here? He did not come to pronounce guilt on us. He came to make a way. Old school tayo kanina. Lay my life down at your feet. He came to make a way. One way. Jesus. Amen. Because he knew that without him, it would not be possible. The law was not given to save man. The law was given to show God's righteous requirements. And man could not fulfill the righteous requirement of God. That's why God had to come and fulfill his own righteous requirement. And on behalf of himself, he made a covenant with you and I and he was the lamb. He was the blood sacrifice for that covenant to be ratified. Amen. He did not come to condemn. He came to save. Salvation is love. God's love in perfection. Come on, let me say that again. Salvation is God's love in perfection. It's God's plan in fruition. No, bleed, pastor. It's God's plan. He came to save. Amen. He came to save you and I. And he gave salvation as a gift. So the plan is what? What is the plan of God for you and for me? Salvation. Everybody say salvation. His plan for humanity. It's not a hard. Yes, very good. But yung bata alam niya. His plan for us is salvation. What is his motivation? Perfect. Philippians 2, 5, and 11, 5 to 11. It says, that this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery, to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bond servant and coming in the likeness of men and being found in the appearance as a man, he humbled himself and he became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Amen. This is God's plan. And the motivation for this is love. Why did God have to come as a man? Because he loves us. Why did God have to suffer as a man? Because he loves us. Why did he need to humble himself? Because he loves us. Why did he need to die? Because he loves us. Yes, that's right, Abia. God loves us so much. And even if you were the only person on earth, He would still do it. We need to know how wonderful and how marvelous is the love of God. Because if we cannot understand this love, we will not really understand why He came. He died on the cross because... Come on, he died on the cross because, come on, can you tell the person beside you, God loves you? Maybe somebody really needed to hear that today. Maybe somebody needed to know that today. 
Maybe that's you. Maybe you need to, to hear that. Everything God did was because of love. He loves you, brother. He loves you, sister. But the verse continues. I love this. Therefore, God also has highly exalted him. How did God highly exalt Jesus? When he died on the cross? Are you here? Did God highly exalt Jesus when he died on the cross? No, because the cross was a picture of shame, humility, of guilty, of punishment for sin. The cross was not the high exaltation. When did God highly exalt Jesus? Amen. Everybody say the resurrection. You see, without the resurrection, there is no use for the cross. Amen. Without his resurrection, everything we believe in is pointless. The resurrection proved the high exaltation of Jesus Christ. Amen. And that was also part of the plan. The humiliation of Christ was part of the plan. The death and mutilation of Christ was part of the plan. But it, the exaltation and Christ being raised from the dead is also part of the plan. You know, I don't like watching movies that end to the sad ending. So I don't understand this whole notebook. If you just want to cry, go ahead. But I don't like sad endings. And I don't know why, but Filipinos love the sad endings. Yung paglabas mo ng sine, ah! Ang sigit sa dibdib! Feel na feel natin, kira ayoko ng movie na happy ending. Gusto ko yung movie na talagang pag paglabas mo, yung uhog mo, nasa damit mo, it's just, ah! Yung isang buong tissue, ah! Di ba? I remember my, my uncle, my mom loves sad stories. So one day, my, my uncle went to my mom in her office. Tara, let's watch a movie. That's, it's really, really, you know, it's really, really sad story. Buy tissue. Oh, my mom. Oh. Went to the, and she looked at the title of the movie. And she's like, Friday the 13th. What a strange name for a love story. Yeah, it's the time with the lovers they meet on that Friday and they fall in love with each other and it's so tragic. Oh, I like it. You know, she sits down in the movie oh, and all of a sudden, wink, wink, Jason Voorhees comes out. She's like, ano ba to? We Filipinos, we love yung, yung sad stories. Diba? And that's why sometimes our life is like that, eh? Telenovela. Madrama. That's why I like happy endings. Yes, life will have drama. Come on, let's be honest. Life will have twists. Life will have unexpected surprises. There will be contrabidas in life, unfortunately. But I like happy endings. Because that's how God is. Yay! If your ending is not happy, it's not yet the ending. Come on. With God, I believe there's always a happy ending. And Jesus proved it. Yes, he died on the cross. Yes, they cried for three days. But he rose again. God is the God of impossibilities. Amen. He, yes, he was humbled. He was mutilated. He even died. But then God glorified him. He rose again. Come on. Let's finish that verse. Therefore God has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name. That at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in those in heaven, on earth, and underneath the earth. And every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God. His resurrection proved his kingship. 
He was king in this world and even death, which nobody ever conquered. Jesus conquered death. Amen. The final, the final enemy he conquered. What else can he not do? He humiliated himself. He died. But yet, happy ending. Everybody say happy ending. Jesus rose again. His motivation was love. Even for the resurrection. Because God loved us, he didn't remain dead. He rose again. Amen. The cross motivation was love. And the empty tombs motivation was love. Because he didn't do it just for himself. He did it for you. He did it for me. Amen. So let's go back to Ephesians, his prayer. For this reason, seeing the greatness of the plan of which we are built together in Christ. See, what? how are we built together in Christ? It begins with the right foundation. And that found, we enter into that foundation through salvation. Amen. Next verse, verse 15. From whom every family in heaven and earth is named, that father for whom all fatherhood takes its title and derives its name. Stop. So because of salvation, we are not just forgiven. We are not just glorified with Christ. We are not just redeemed. We are now part of a family. Can I tell you, we are now all related in Christ. We are not related by blood, but we are related in the spirit. Are you there? Come on, look beside you. That's your family. Nako, asa, niligawan ko pa yan siya, pastor. Paano yan, niligawan ko pa, family ko na kaagad. Pwede pa pakasalan ko muna bago maging family. Mahirap na bawal sa Pilipinas, pakasalan ng kapamilya mo. Amen? You're not in, if you're related in blood, bawal. But if you're related in the spirit, hindi po siya bawal. Actually, dapat pakasalan mo nga ang mga for single lang, ha? Kung may asawa ka na, huwag ka nang, huwag ka nang umepal, ha? Okay? These are for the singles. You want to marry somebody that you are related to in God's kingdom. Amen? That's the best person you can marry. Amen? If you're looking for a qualification, make sure they're part of God's family. Amen? Pastor, paano kung hindi pa? Pwede ko ba i-evangeligaw? It's up to you. It's up to you. From whom? So how did we become a part of God's family? John 1, 10 to 13. Jesus was in the world and the world was made through him. And the world did not know him. He came to his own and his own did not receive him. But as many as received him. Have you received him? To them he gave the right to become children of God. To those who believe in his name. Next verse. Who were born not of blood nor of the will of the flesh nor of the will of man, but what? Of God. See, it's not a relative in the blood. It's not a relative in the flesh. It is a, it's, it's being related in the spirit. It's being united in the spirit. And because of the, what Jesus did on the cross, and again, don't just say cross, and the resurrection. His death and Resurrection, we'll say it dar. What? Dar. What Jesus did, dar. You know, over dar. What did Jesus do, dar? Death and resurrection. Amen. What did you learn in church today, dar? It's not just about the death. It's about the death and resurrection. Amen. Dar she blows. See, his plan was this. He was going to save us. His motivation was love. The expression of his love was death on the cross. The result of that love and that death was we became his family. Amen. 
we became a part of His family. Going back to the prayer. Are you part of God's family? Therefore, this prayer is for you. Let's go to verse 16. Ephesians 3.16. It says, may, this is Paul's prayer. May He grant you, talking about God the Father, out of the rich treasury of His glory to be, come on, to be and with mighty power, where? In the kilikili? Where? In the? By the Holy Spirit Himself indwelling in your innermost being and personality. Amen? His prayer was this. He talked about the love of God. Amen? The motivation, the plan, but and being part of God's family. Yes. Because of this, you now have a rich treasury of His glory. Now, I like that. Anybody have a bank account? Anybody have money saved somewhere aside from a bank? See, there are many ways to invest or save your money. Tama po ba? Are you here? And it's good to have that. Not always just liquid cash hanging around in shoeboxes. Mahirap na kung puro shoebox sa bahay. Nothing happens to that money in shoeboxes. Amen? It's good to invest. It's good to do something with your money. Amen? And of course, for me, the best investment is in God's kingdom. Because I like the return in God's kingdom, 30, 60, 100 fold. Amen? You don't lose there. Amen? But there's a rich treasury when you are a part. In, it's like you, you belong to a family that owns the whole Metro Manila. Like say, your family owns the whole Makati. Meron pang ganyan? Sa Pilipinas. You know, you have this treasury. You're not going to worry if you're going to eat breakfast today. You're just worried about what country you're going to eat breakfast today. Come on. I'd rather have to worry about that than worry, am I going to eat anything today? But then God says, why worry? He says, if I can clothe the flowers, if I can feed the birds, don't you think you're more important? Than the birds and the flowers? But kasi so many times we say we trust God, but we're always making discarte. Dinadaan natin sa discarte kasi Pinoy tayo eh. And discarte is, you know, for, for it's good naman, di ba? Mahirap naman kung wala. But when it comes to trusting, it's not about you. Amen. But I want to encourage you, with trust comes obedience. You will never have true trust without obedience. You can't say, I trust God if you don't, you know, obey. Yeah? Are you still here? So God has this rich treasury. Can you put the verse up? He has this rich treasury. In His glory. To be strengthened and reinforced with powerful might in the inner man. How do we get this? It's very simple. Through the Holy Spirit. Do you have the Holy Spirit? See Paul's prayer, another prayer in, in Ephesians chapter 1. Verse 17 to 20. This is Paul praying. For I always pray to the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, that He may grant you, I include myself, me, a spirit of wisdom and revelation of the insights into mysteries and secrets in the deep and intimate knowledge of Paul's prayer, and this is my prayer. That you may know Him. I pray that we truly know our God. That we don't just know God through Superbook and Flying House. 
or Sunday school. I love Sunday school. I thank God for our, our team in Kids Kingdom Kids. At a young age, they're teaching their kids. That's why you can't just know God through the teachers. You can't just know God through me. I pray that I am not the foundational source of your knowledge for God. That your relationship. I come here to exhort. I come here to explain. I come here to share. But my knowledge of God is personal. And His desire is that you would have that personal knowledge of Him. That the resurrection of Jesus Christ is personal to you. It's not an event that we celebrate as a community. It is an anniversary of sorts to celebrate what happens in us. That our relationship with God is not based on stories or sermons. It's based on reality. Paul's prayer is so profound yet so simple. Next verse. By having the eyes of your heart flooded with light so that you can know and understand the hope to which God has called you and how rich, what is the hope? Salvation. That He's called us to salvation, but not just here on earth. There is one day when we're done here, the hope of heaven. Amen. And how rich is His glorious inheritance because we are part of the family. Next verse. And so that you can know and understand what is the immeasurable and unlimited and surpassing greatness of His power in and for us who believe as demonstrated in the working of His mighty strength which He exerted on Christ when He raised Him from the dead and seated Him in His own right hand. He's saying, not only do you know about your salvation, that, that, you, that you may know the Holy Spirit. You see, the expression of God's love was His death. But the fruition, the fulfillment of God's love in our lives is Him giving us His Holy Spirit. The perfect gift. And he's talking about the power from the Holy Spirit which raised Jesus from the dead that you may know that it belongs to you. That resurrection did not just happen to Jesus 2,000 years ago, but resurrection happened to all of us that day when we received Jesus as Lord and Savior and His salvation. Did you know that on the day that you received Him, there was a crucifixion, there was a burial, and there was a resurrection. And it did not take three days it happened in an instant where? on the cross? no that happened 2,000 years ago in your heart that's why Paul's prayers I pray that you would understand this power what power? the power that raised Christ from the dead and can I tell you today that that same power is available for you. Romans 8.11 Romans 8.11 says, But if the Spirit of Him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, He who raised Christ from the dead 
will also give life to your mortal body through the Spirit who dwells in you. Do you know where we get this resurrection life? It's the Spirit inside of us. You see, the Holy Spirit is love perfection in our lives. It's God's perfect love. His Holy Spirit is God's perfect love. And to be rooted and grounded in that love means to be rooted and grounded in the Holy Spirit that He has given us. That's the only way you can truly understand and feel and experience the love of God. Amen? Are you there? So I want to go back once again to the scripture in Ephesians. I'm going to wrap up this message right now. Go back to the beginning, Ephesians chapter 3, verse 14. For this reason, seeing the greatness of the plan, salvation, by which we are built together in Christ, I bow my knee before the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom every family in heaven and on earth, that's us, is named, that the Father from whom all fatherhood takes its title and derives its name. May He grant you out of the rich treasury of His glory to be strengthened and reinforced with mighty power. Where does that power come from? The Holy Spirit. In the inner man by the Holy Spirit Himself. In dwelling in your innermost being and personality. Where is the Holy Spirit? Inside of us. Next verse. May Christ... The Holy Spirit through, through. It's not pastor's faith. It's not mommy and daddy's faith. You know, Myra was talking to Judah this, this week. So, Judah, do you understand what happened this week? What are we celebrating? Do you understand what Jesus did? And of course, tama naman yung sagot niya. Thank you, Lord. But you need to understand it's personal. Salvation is personal. The power of the Spirit is personal. It's all personal. May Christ through my faith actually dwell, settle down, abide, make His... Do you know that you are the permanent home of His Holy Spirit? It is because He is in you. The ground in which your life is founded on, built on. You may be rooted deep in love and founded security on love. Amen? Verse, next verse. That you may have the power and be strong to apprehend and grasp with all the saints God's devoted experience people, look at this, the experience of that love. What is the breadth, the length, the height, and the depth of it? Stop. What is the experience of this love? It begins with the personal salvation. It begins there. You can never experience the fullness of love if you don't start from the beginning. Salvation is not how often you come to church. Salvation is not how much you know your Bible. Salvation is not traditions that you keep. Salvation is a personal faith in Jesus Christ that you realize that He is alive, that He died for you and for me to pay for our sins and to give us a brand new life in Christ. Amen? Continue. Through salvation, you may really come to know practically through experience for yourself the love of Christ. Come on. It begins with salvation but it continues every day. Every day we experience more of His love. Which far surpasses mere knowledge without experience. 
that you may be filled through all your being unto all the fullness of God. May you have the richest measure of His divine presence and become a body holy and filled, holy filled and flooded with God Himself. I like to say, holy filled and flooded with love Himself. Amen. And then it goes on to say, Now to Him, who by the consequence of the action of His power, which He worked in us, again, salvation, is able to carry out His purpose and do super abundantly, far over and above all that we dare to ask or think, infinitely beyond our highest prayers, highest desires, highest thoughts, highest hopes, or highest dreams to Him be the glory in the church in Christ Jesus through all generations forever and ever. Amen. What does amen mean? I believe it. So be it. So what happens in salvation? I want to end with this. What happens in salvation? Romans 6, 4-11. This is what happens in salvation. Therefore, we are buried with Jesus through baptism into death, that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we should walk in what? In. So, what happened to salvation? Salvation is we identify. First, we believe that Jesus is the Son of God. And number two is we identify with His death, with His burial, and with His resurrection. And what happens when you identify with the death, the burial, and the resurrection? When you identify with the death, it means that your former self, your sinful nature, as Jesus was nailed to the cross... When you pray that prayer, your sinful nature gets nailed to a cross. So what happens to somebody who gets nailed to the cross? What happens to somebody that's nailed in the cross? They die. So when I tell you, your sinful nature dies. It's dead. And then we identify with the burial. What happens with the burial? That dead body is now put in the ground. From dust that you came, dust you shall return. And when you return to dust, there's no coming back. So can I tell you, when you are saved, that sinful nature is not coming back. Did you hear me? It's not coming back. But pastor, what if I think the same? What if I do the same? That's just habits. That's not you anymore. Amen? Are you there? And then we identify with His resurrection. What does that mean? We identify with a brand new life. Did you know that the life inside of you now is not your former? It's a new life. Nice name, no? New Life. Sounds like a church. Nice name to call a church. Amen? You get a new life. But pastor, how, how do I know? Faith. Hi, Faith. We're talking about Faith. You have two dogs, right? Bruce and Coco. What if one day, nagsawa na si Faith sa dalawang aso? She wants one, she prayed that one of the dogs become a cat. Si Coco na lang. Hindi, daga na lang si Coco. Si Coco. So she prayed and she said, Lord, make Coco into a cat. And the Lord answered her prayer. And Coco became a cat. So now you have Bruce and you have Coco. The cat. Coco Chanel? No, Coco the cat. 
Okay? But Coco had always behaved like a dog. He would bark. He would jump. Wag his tail. But Coco was no longer a dog. Coco became a cat. Yes? Now, even if Coco behaves like a dog, is Coco still a dog? No. Coco is now a cat. But pastor, it still acts like a dog. Doesn't matter. What matters is it changed. The behavior does not determine the animal. It's now a cat. It's no longer a dog. It's a cat. How is that possible? That's not That's why it's a miracle. It cannot happen on its own. Behavior change cannot make you born again. It needs a miracle. And salvation is a miracle. So even if you act the way that you formerly did, you're not that person anymore. You're no longer a sinner. You are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And if you don't like Coco, you can give Coco to Rocky. Because Rocky likes cats. Right, Rocky? Do you understand what happens in salvation? It's not about your behavior. It's a newness of life. Now eventually, since Coco is a cat, he realizes that he should not behave like a dog anymore. And he's now, instead of barking, he's now... Because it's what it is. It will eventually come out. And it's the same with you and I. Allow the fruit of the Spirit to let the righteous nature begin to come out in your life. When you act like you used to act, you're not behaving like yourself. Many people like to say that. You're like, you're behaving like yourself. No, I'm not. Actually, I am not behaving like myself anymore because I am no longer that person. I have a resurrection life. Now there is a new life in me. New life sounds like a nice name. There's a new life in me. I am not that dog anymore. Forget dogs and cats. I am not that person anymore. Amen. So when people say, you're behaving like your old self. No, that's not me anymore. I'm not behaving like myself. I need to behave like myself. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Amen. Did you understand that, church? See, this newness of life, let's continue reading. For if we have been united together in the likeness of His death, certainly we also shall be in the likeness of His resurrection. Continue. Knowing this, that our old man was crucified with Him, that the body of our sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves to sin. For he who has died has been freed from sin. Now he, if we died with Christ, we believe that we shall also, what? Live with him. Knowing that Christ, having been raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has dominion over Jesus. For death that he died, he died once for all. But the life that he lives, he lives to God. Amen. Likewise, just as Jesus, likewise, we also reckon ourselves to be dead indeed to sin, but alive to God in Christ. No. So the resurrection, when you receive Jesus, it happened to you. Amen. You are no longer your old self. You have a new life in Christ. Amen. Isn't that good news? Isn't that what you want to hear in church? Good news. Amen. This is our desire to share good news. So I'm done with my message today, but I'm not done with my, with my sermon. Because I believe that there are people here today that you may be coming to church for a while, but you've never had that personal relationship with Jesus. 
you've never said for yourself, wow, this is what salvation is. Wow, I didn't know that. And maybe you're here today and you're thinking, that's not what I thought. I thought it was just hearing, you know, following what the pastor says and I'm good to go. No, no, it's not about behavior. It's about Jesus wanting to have a relationship with you and do that miracle in your life. Meaning take your old sinful nature, nail it to the cross, but nobody's going to be nailed to any cross. Don't worry. Taking that dead sinful nature and burying it away forever, not to return to it again, and celebrating a new life in Christ as you receive Him as Lord and Savior. In respect to everyone, can I ask all to shut their eyes, please? And bow their heads. Nobody look around and nobody look at me. Now, I know if you're looking at me because I can see you. So it's good to not look at me. Amen? And so my question today is this. You may have been celebrating Easter or Resurrection Sundays for the past, all the, all the years of your life. But you've never experienced that resurrection life personally for yourself. If that's you today and you can say that you've never, let me repeat, you have never received Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And you want this newness of life today with everybody's eyes closed. Again, I can see your eyes if you're open. Would you say, Pastor, I want that. I want that new life. Not being a part of a church, but the life that we have in Christ. I want that rest. I don't want to be that old, my old self anymore. I want to experience my this new life in Christ. Again, if you've never prayed this and you want to do it today with everybody's eyes closed, would you please raise your hand and say, Pastor, would you please pray for me? Lift it high so I can see. Thank you. Thank you for your hands. Thank you. Now, I'm going to ask you to do something brave. Can I ask you to stand up, please? For those who have, don't worry, nobody's looking around. Please stand up. Don't be afraid to stand up. If you've never prayed, if you prayed this before, it's okay. We're going to pray together. Amen. And if you didn't stand up, and, but you want to pray this prayer, for those who stood up, please pray with me. And even those who didn't, would you pray this prayer out loud as we pray to Jesus. Amen. Say this with me. Heavenly Father, everybody, Heavenly Father, thank you for you demonstrating your love towards me by giving your son Jesus Christ to come to earth as a man to die and to suffer for my sins thank you Lord Jesus paid the price that I couldn't pay. Lord Jesus, I believe you are the Son of God that came to this earth for me. Thank you for loving me so much. Today, I make a decision to give my life to you. I know that you paid the price to forgive my sins. To take my old sinful life and nail it to the cross together with you. And I know that by your love, you take this old, dead, sinful self and you bury it away forever. And I know because you love me that you'll give me today a brand new life in Jesus Christ. No longer sinful, I am the righteousness of God in you. My life is not my own. I belong to you. I thank you for your sacrifice, for dying for me, for taking my place and, be, and resurrecting again.
to give me a new life. Holy Spirit, you live inside of me. You are the perfect expression of God's love for me. You will never leave me. You will never forsake me. And I thank you that you will always demonstrate your love towards me every day for as long as I live. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Come on, let's give Lord praise. Lord, thank you. Thank you for your word today. Thank you that you've, you've showed us how much you love us. Not just by dying on the cross, but by resurrecting as well from the grave. Lord, thank you that we continue to live in the newness of life. This resurrection life that you've given us. We thank you for that. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. 